Normally, if you went to most transfer stations, it would just be trash in and trash out. The construction and demolition and the residential recycling, we sort through them in something called a material recovery facility. We're kind of like the military, so we have lots and lots of acronyms, and so this is an MRF or a MRF. So I have three MRFs on site, and one is sorting residential recycling, so bottles and cans and cardboard and paper. And number one and number two are our plastics that everybody can recycle. So number one, plastic PET, polyethylene terephthalates, bottles, it's your Coke bottle. Sometimes it's what you get your soup in when you get Tom Kargahi at the Thai place. Yeah. That's, that's going to be a number one plastic. Um, number two is high density polyethylene. That's your milk containers and your Tide containers, basically. Uh, Atwala, I think, comes in that too. Um, and then there's like all the other stuff. Now, by volume, by weight, and by sheer numbers of objects that are in the world that we are handling, most of it's number one and number two household wise. All the other stuff gets collected together, mixed together into one bale, like a big bale of everything else. And because of where we physically are, that is we're in California and we're right next to the port, it makes the most sense to send it to China. In 2002 and into 2003, we were shipping ships full of empty cargo containers. Why? Why? Well, because they were exporting so much. They were exporting more than we were exporting. So we were sending them empty boxes. And that means for them to acquire and get access to the natural resources that they need in order to make the products that we buy from them, they literally are running out of stuff. North America is still the largest consumer of, of their stuff. China breaks the bill, they open it up, they hand sort it and again, and then you have these like bizarre, you know, you have these weird skills that after you've been working in your job for five years, you're like, well, I know these things. So, so there's a, you know, there's folks in China, ooh, I know what that is, that's number five. Like they can do that kind of stuff because they, they, they you know, they do that. Um, and so they put all the plastics in their piles and each of it goes all to be recycled individually by type. To understand why plastics are different types of plastics, it's carbon bonds. It's really that simple. If we think of it um, like if cooking is a good um, analogy for that, like you might cook with butter, you might cook with vegetable oil, you might cook with olive oil, or you might cook with grapeseed oil. Even if you don't cook, you've done this because you've taken butter and you put it on the stove and it's gotten too hot and it's scorched, turned brown, and it started smoking. Now what you did is you started breaking those carbon bonds and they break really low. They break down around 250 in butter. Versus grapeseed oil, which is why they use that on making crepes. Like it's super hot and it has super crazy carbon bonds and it will go up to say six or 700 degrees before it vaporizes and turns to smoke. Same thing with plastic. So HDPE melts at one temperature and then this other kind of plastic melts at another temperature. And you can't throw them all in together and just turn on the pot because some of it's going to vaporize completely like butter does and some of it still isn't even going to be melted. So it'll be kind of like mixing butter with lard or something like Crisco or so. Um, so it won't melt at all because you can't put them all together. You won't make anything good. Um, then uh, there, it's going to come back basically. I mean we, we sell it to them and then they sell it back to us in new forms of new objects, mostly going to come back as like garden tools or benches or the pots that um, plants come in, curbs, plastic curbs, like all kinds of random things that don't need to be particularly 